Hi everyone, here's the Bookamist once again, and a few of you during the course of the last few weeks or months have asked me about my favorite poets, and if I read poetry in general, and I actually do, um, maybe not on a daily basis, but quite often. Uh, I have studied poetry as an English major, actually I think uh, as far as my modules went, the modules I took during my bachelor's and master's degree, I actually studied more poetry than prose. Anyway, I'm not going to give you any constructive speech on how poetry is going to save Europe or the world. You find many of those on the internet by very famous people and they are all uplifting and I love all of them. Poetry still probably is not going to do all that. I'm going to tell you that you should definitely read poetry if you're already into literature or if you're into music or if you are a human being because it really, once you start getting it, it really shows you the power, the sheer power of language, of all narrative, no, not really, of all forms of expression, poetry is the one that unleashes the sheer powers of power of words so much. When I'm reading book, when I'm reading prose, I'm reading novels, yeah, of course, you find beautiful styles and beautiful prose and some writers who, you know, use their prose to create these beautiful landscapes or really show you the power of word or the other can do. Don DeLillo is one of the writers who insist a lot on these. Michael Shabon has talked extensively about the enjoyable experience of relishing in the beauty and the nuances of words, especially for young writers. But on this front, in general, I tend to be with Anif Qureshi, who talked about the value, you know, the value of improving your prose. No one gives, gives a fuck about the prose. It's the story you read for, it's the book in general, it's the experience. With, uh, you know, poetry, that's different. With poetry, every word counts, like, literally. Everything matters. You see how something so basic, so basically human, is so important. And of course, I've read some plays in a catch actually in a bad book, I read it that if it's language who makes us human what we are, who distinguishes us from the rest of nature, then poetry, which is language to the nth power, isn't that something worth preserving, worth studying, worth reading? Maybe it's not, who knows? Anyway, these are five of my favorite poem, poets. Uh, I'm a fucking nerd who sees the world in terms of uh, pointless charts, so I'm going to give you a chart, of course, of my five favorite poets. Uh, all of these are rather, uh, you know, they're all major, I'm sure you knew, uh, know them already. If you haven't, do read their poems in an annotated edition with a reader's guide. I definitely need those in order to understand my like poems. And sure, enjoy the sheer power of words, enjoy the emotions, the experience summons like in your heart, but also like, you know, notice the like technical parts, like the metrics and the rhyme scheme and the figure, rhetorical figures, because that sounds boring and it sounds fascist, but it's not really. It's like if you enjoy music, and you don't even want to know what instrument that is. That would be stupid, wasn't it, wasn't it? So, you know, don't be a dick with poetry. I'm looking at you, that poet society, even though you were an okay movie, actually rather good, I think. I, I, I like that movie. Number five is Robert Browning, who is, I think, the one I know the least among all these poems, uh, poets. I only know some of his works, really, but I was completely stricken the first time I read, read a poem like My Last Duchess by the sheer narrative power of such a piece. In a very compact form, it tells a beautiful, nuanced story that you can read in so many different ways. If you want to know what I'm talking about when I talk about all this bullshit on the power of words, read a poem like Porphyria's lover and tell me if that is not fucking disturbing and upsetting just as the best of Lovecraft's short stories, really. Number four is Gerard Manley Hopkins, who is a Victorian Jesuit poet. I would suggest to all fans of Lana Del Rey and XX and other depressing music acts for the sheer power of the sadness and despair he conveys in his poems. I'm referring here to his so-called terrible sonnets, but some of his poems are also quite uplifting and they describe beauty and how the world is great. He was very involved with nature and with the beauties of the small things. Uh, he is another one of those guys who play with the power of words up to great, the greatest extent and he definitely is the kind of guy you need a reader's guide to understand. 
Some of these points, especially for non-native speakers like me, are completely incomprehensible. But when you realize what he's doing with his rhythm, with his like uh, words, really, with his lexicon and terminology and all the scientific terms, he is really he's building fucking cathedrals with words. And that's kind of awesome once you think about it. Number three will be Wallace Stevens, another guy who, you know, is fond of non-common terms, scientific terminology, foreign words, whose poems are borderline incomprehensible at times and completely incomprehensible at other times. But he is able, as much as Hopkins, to build such beautiful structures, such rewarding and like moving pieces with his words, and here in Stevens, also the imagery, the fantastical imagery, is sometimes so satisfying by itself. Just read, well, I think his, one of his first poems, at least the fir first published poems, is called Earthy Anecdote, and it's about a fire cat chasing bucks in Oklahoma. What is a fire cat? Do you know what's a fire cat? I don't! But it's so amazing, and the image has never left me. And just thinking of the fucking fire cat, like makes me feel calm and makes me feel, you know, makes me wonder, wonder in this world of fire cats chasing bugs. This is not one of the most scientifically literary videos I have ever filmed. Number two and number one I will tell you at the same time because I'm not sure which one I prefer are Robert Frost and William Butler Yeats. I think I probably prefer Yeats slightly but also because I have studied and read his poems uh, way more extensively than Frost's. I think both these authors are extremely similar in that their poems are very musical, very easy to understand, to read, uh, very memorable, definitely two of the most memorable poets I've ever read, even more than the Romantics, and at the same time they can show hidden layers of difficulty that are maybe not there, maybe not visible at first read, but when you realize they're there, when you realize the hidden meanings and the symbology in their po poems, it's sheer genius. Robert Frost is especially good at portraying landscapes of New England, especially in the winter, uh, talking about all these uh, abandoned villages and farmsteads in New England and about the hidden forces of madness, of solitude, of nature at play there and sometimes some of his poems convey images and summon feelings just again as much as some of Lovecraft's best stories, another New England, oh, another one of New England's finest. William Butler Yeats especially focuses on Irish uh, mythology, Irish myth and Irish legends, Irish the national spirit of the island, the nature of the island, but at the same time he can focus on the hidden, the hidden meaning of words, the hidden powers of nature, he believed in magic in some way and all that. And if you think about it, all this talking about hidden forces is especially appropriate for poems that are so simple and so enjoyable to read, but that hide all these layers of meaning, that hide all these feelings that are there, they are just there to be found, are just there to be dug out, dug out of the poem. It's beautiful in a way, and it reflects the way when you give yourself to a task, when you like put some effort into a task like reading a poem, you can get so much out of it and it's, it can be so rewarding that it becomes something more than a hobby or something you do for pleasure and it becomes something that stays with you for the rest of your life. And since I don't want to like, you know, give one of those speeches about how literature is going to save the world, I'm not. I'm going to stop here. But really, I do believe that reading some poetry, I, I don't read lots of poetry at all. Uh, I don't know, I'd like to, but I don't have the time or brains. But anyway, I do think that reading poetry is going to make you a better reader, a better person, probably. It's maybe too much of a stretch, but I kind of believe that. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you have never read poetry in your life, I think that Yeats and Frost are good starting points because they're extremely easy and rewarding. Maybe if you start with Hopkins, you're going to drop everything immediately. Uh, let me know who your favorite poets are, uh, if you like the ones I mentioned, if you like others. For the Italian out there, since I'm uh, Italian actually, I think my favorite Italian poet is uh, Eugenio Montale, but I have never studied Italian poetry, especially contemporary, to the extent I've studied English and American poetry. Thank you so much for watching once again, guys. Let me know whatever passed through your mind, passes through your mind in the comments below. I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys. I would like a fire cat to pet.